What's that other liquid that supposedly makes you trip? It's not a Jägermeister. It's this other stuff. Called... Absinthe. Oh, absinthe? absinthe. What in it? Isn't that along the same principles, right? They're, they're using these herbs and stuff to uh, create or create an alcohol, alcoholic beverage that has way more properties than just a straight whiskey or a vodka or something. Well, yeah, that's the thing is like, you know, you have the initial fermentation process, but then you distill it down. But a lot of these complex residues, right, um, from plants, like if you're using whole things, for example, if you're making like a, you know, like if you're making like a, a wart, right, or that mash, right, you're adding in your raw ingredients while you're pouring off, there's going to be kind of some silt. Like when you, okay, like, you know, basically you're making a whiskey by taking that initial fermented product and then distilling it again and again and again to remove the water to concentrate, right? Even to like a lot of the kind of philosophy of like the spirit right you know like there's a lot of it kind of goes back to alchemy and kind of like a like a like a retort or a lambeck uh kind of like like certain kind of methods like you were understanding how these organic and inorganic processes were interacting you know through like heating and cooling but also like like these, uh, these unforeseen kind of aspects right it's interesting because you cut like you know like when you look at like examples where like the dinoflagellates right um <clears throat> these bioluminescent microbes um in like in the caribbean waters right when, when the europeans came over the spaniards they thought the devil was in the bay and they were shelling cannonballs so when you splash around dinoflagellates they blew they grow this brilliant brilliant blue right you could swim through it um even too there's like this anecdote where a number of um uh like during the civil war a number of soldiers were injured in a bog and they were crawling their way out and they're glowing because you had this uh bioluminescent bacteria that had kind of grown on and over them when they were in the swamp and i'm sure the environment the environmental quality before like heavy industry took off, like, you know, the when it's still the antebellum or the South hadn't industrialized yet, I'm sure the ecology was pretty nice, right? You have a lot less things floating around and denuding. So yeah, it's kind of like the, these ethereal things. Yeah, we're like, even too, in um, some of Rudolf Steiner's like lectures of agriculture, and Leighton and I, you talked about this leaf as well. <clears throat> you know, if you swap out, whenever he says forces, you swap out microbes, it makes a lot of sense because you're talking about this biogeochemistry. But even too, like in, in the lecture, his understanding of microbiology says, oh, I don't think it, I don't think they have a big role. But then he even says, like, oh, I may actually be wrong because he was someone who is sitting at the foundation of these interdisciplinary fields to kind of come into as well. So, yeah, it's kind of funny, like a lot of these processes which were done and there was there was a narrative, a mythology, a lore that explained it. But when you track it back, it's like, oh, yeah, that's like a perfect area to kind of be like, you know, a stab, right? A stab or like or even to a slant. So if anyone that's not done bacteria microbiology work, when you preserve a culture of fungus or bacteria, you'll kind of make a bit of agar and a little kind of uh, vial or a test tube. And then, you know, with fungi, especially you'll put in a popsicle stick, right? And the fungus doesn't really like the agar as a long-term solution it wants to be in wood. And even to longer term culture storage for agar could be as simple as just like, you know, slightly under hydrated wood shavings. So it's kind of interesting that these organisms are living in and on all these crevices, which are microscopic. I think people have an intuition with it when we talk about biochar, right? Or like, or like pumice soil where like there's these porous microstructures, which you can charge or inoculate with biology or even soak it with different nutrients to kind of imbue or hydrate as well. So yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, right? And you look at all the fermentation vessels, right? Wood, ceramic, right? These things are porous, right? You get into some of the people that talk about the bioceramics in Japan, right? You know, they're porous areas that you can kind of store these materials in and they, they're durable, right? They're recalcitrant. Um, and you talk to anyone that, you know, works in a hospital or works in microbiology research, these microbes are really hard to kill. And one of the big features is the actual structure of the material on a microscopic scale. So it's it's pretty amazing. This is why stainless steel is so at, is so uh, so sought after and so good because it's a crystal, right? You know there are little pock marks, but there aren't these little crevices in glass. Like glass, silicon oxide. You know there are impurities that are are unnoticeable to us, but when you get down under a macro lens or stainless steel microscope, you can see that. Oh wow, there's actually this. Even to I think one example, uh, when I was doing mushroom cultivation. You know, like when I was first starting, like I was doing liquid culture. So doing these jars, little bioreactors of a, of a nutrient solution. And you can take, use the ball jars and reuse the collars as well as the jars themselves. But the collars, sometimes they rust up a bit. If they rusted, I'd have to toss it because even if I cleaned it, that rust is going to be such a higher fractal kind of surface area, which just need a little spore or a little contaminant get in there. Even if I sterilized it, they'd hang out and survive that kind of thermal shock. So yeah, like you have to conceptualize, okay, when I'm looking at something, it appears like to this aspect, but if I understand how it's going to look on the microbial scale, you know, that could be a very nice little pocket to hide out in, right? You know, if you're out in the woods, right? Well, there's survival. One of the biggest things they tell you is to find like an overhang of a cliff or somewhere out of the wind, right? Where you can not be exposed to the elements, like to keep yourself warm, you know, like getting back to kind of the as above is below scale invariance. Like imagine if you were a microbe, you know, like as if you were wandering in the woods and trying to stay warm and survive and find food, it's very similar, probably a lot more brutal on the microbial realm.